in yeah. Philadelphia. Uh, what I know from Philadelphia, I've been following Philadelphia rappers since I'm going to say Joey Jahad. Remember Joey Jahad? Um, that, yeah. Yep. You know, Joey Jahad, that Meek Mill era back when he was free, you know, uh, battling on the blocks and in, in, in Philadelphia and stuff like that. Uh, I think he's from I think he's from West Philadelphia. I think I think he's from the I think he's from West the West Side. I'm not too sure with uh, Meek Mill is from. I'm not you know really a Meek Mill fan, but um, I, I'm more of a fan of the North Philly brothers like uh, Gilly. You know, major figures, major figures. Oh, Dutch and Spade. You talking about that? Yeah. Right, right, right. Dutch and Spade, major, major. The whole major figures. Um, Ar Ab, Dark Low, yeah, uh, Leak Moss, uh, the whole eight OBH. So, you know, let's not forget that the, the country wisdom. There was one cat I used to like in Philly, name was Cicero. I don't know if you remember. Cicero, yo, yo, remember that, brother? <laughs> Cicero was that yo, dude. Yo, yo, yeah, yeah. He, Cicero he, was that dude, man. He was that dude. But you know, Philly has always been, you know, um, you know, gone through. They've always gone through. You know struggles you know what i mean like some real serious struggles just like in new york exactly. only difference is the laws are different in philadelphia i want to yeah. ask you a question so, do you think new york would be as bad as philadelphia if um new york had philadelphia gun laws philadelphia gun laws because i was resident out there in pennsylvania in the state of pennsylvania the metro areas some of them don't adhere to gun laws like they don't they're not allowed to carry concealed weapons you understand certain parts of philadelphia pennsylvania should we say i think new york if new york had um stricter like i don't say stricter gun laws but allow people to carry concealed weapons i think crime would have been down honestly you think crime would have been down if new york would have had a concealed carry law exactly i to me, I think so. Cause I think people would think twice before doing anything. You understand? That's, I'm not saying give anyone a weapon because you know you guys go through the background check and such and such. But I believe people would think twice, though. People would think twice before doing certain things. I don't think crime will be because I don't know. I'm sound crazy, but say somebody decides to do something like, for instance, come shoot up a block just for the sake of it. You know, you know how they, you know, say it's just like some gang activity, or whatever. I think they'll think twice about people and doing committing the act because people in the neighborhood probably are armed or something like that. You get what I'm saying? Some elders are probably on the block. There's probably some kind of block association that has some kind of rifle club. If if New York was permitted to do so, people wouldn't have been committing such acts. Well, what I'm saying is this. Mm -hmm. If New York had Philadelphia gun laws, mm -hmm. I think that New York would be worse than Philadelphia. Really? Yeah, because that? because Phil, it seems as if see I can I can we can go in on this subject another time too, so we could like have the actual facts of like the actual gun laws, and I think that's where this show is gonna, you know, go in the future where we have actual we can share the screen screen and show you know what are the gun laws in Philadelphia versus the gun laws in New York City. Absolutely. However, so right now we don't have those facts. However, um, uh. My thing is like Philadelphia is known to be a like 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 the wild wild west. Exactly. And and I and I, I feel I, I think that is it's attributed to the gun laws. Now you know in New York, like if you get caught in Philadelphia with a gun, is it an automatic three to five years like New York City? Because if you get caught with a you know you can't get caught with a knock, as the young cats would say. You can't get caught. You can't get caught in New York with a knock, because if you get caught with a knocker, and and, and you're going straight to Rikers Island, and it's a yeah. mandatory three to five. Three to five, exactly. So, so people in New York, you know, they think twice and three times before they go out there with a pistol. They have to like go through extreme measures to make sure they don't get caught by the by the authority. If it's legal. That's what I'm saying. If we had legal. You know, gun carrying, concealed, you know, carrying concealed weapons. I don't, I, I don't think there'll be as much random acts of crime taking place, like people, like being getting robbed, you know, harassed in the streets and such and such. You, you get what I'm saying? Crime will always be, unfortunately, an element in ingrained, ingrained in American society. You know? That's.
damn, just because I don't know what's going on. We keep losing connection, but I think crime crime is something that's always going to take place. You understand? If cheese was in New York, I don't know what time he. I think he got shot like eight p.m. Yeah, it was around eight. They say around eight thirty, eight forty. Now think about this: at eight forty in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, which is we already know, hands down, traditionally has been <laughs> the worst borough. <laughs> they held that title since i guess it existed i'm telling you so now but even in brooklyn yeah do you at 8 40 people do get murdered in, in brooklyn at 8 40 that's for sure at broad daylight broad daylight yeah, no I'm, like brooklyn is just unfortunately it's, it's like that because it's so many different factors and you know this is as we as you said this podcast is gonna speak on many perspectives on what leads to the element of crime you know, and what takes place within our communities, what's affecting the community. You know, it's the same old say, same old song to say the lack of resources and education, fathers not in the home, and you know, um, people are getting affiliated with street organizations and such. And a lot of um, dudes are running off emotions, lack of lack of um, emotional intelligence takes place. The ego, the easily bruised psych psychological issues, a lot, a lot of things do factor in that we got to take in consideration. But the main thing is, when does it stop, or when do we bring in a sense of hope, of accountability? You know, instead of doing the, the the average normal thing, just saying, "Yo, it's the white man, it's the white man, it's the white man." You know what I'm saying? And again, we're not Republicans for people going there. Also, oh, now we're not Republicans. You no, know, we subscribe to that Black Lives Matter stuff. We're just talking about standing up and bringing some kind of change because we got to change the narrative on what's going on. So, right, that's an actual fact. So now let's let's go back to, to back to what we were we were discussing. So, mm -hmm. so if Cheese was in Brooklyn at eight forty, we don't know the circumstance. We don't know what actually happened. So you know, you know, I, I think that. With the tougher gun laws in New York City, I think that maybe that wouldn't have happened. But that's, you know, right now we're theorizing and stuff like that. And, you know, rest in peace to that brother and and, and condolences to his family. You know, I, I'm just speaking in regards to the gun laws. If, if the gun laws in Philly had the same gun laws in New York City, mm -hmm. would Philly's gun violence would be as high as it is? You know, and, and that's something that we could we could um you know expound on another time when we actually know the gun laws yeah, get the and, data and everything yeah, else, the laws and the data. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So right. So moving along uh, on cheese, um uh you know, I don't want to speculate mm -hmm. on how it happened. Um, however, you know, I do want to say this to black people. Mm -hmm. um there's got to be a point where we n start taking a look at our behavior and how we interact with each other and how we value each other exactly being that, being that we we're all we have like if you look across the world the world's looking at us they're looking at us through rap music through sports mm -hmm. through just overall leadership because we're here in america mm -hmm. and you know basically people look up to us mm -hmm. and the way we carry ourselves you know gives every other black person who are not involved in those types of activities it gives those people who would be more considered civilians it gives mm -hmm. a, it, it gives us a bad look it makes us look bad when when white people Black people, African, whatever you call it, whatever you want to call it across the world, when they look at us on on television or they look us look at us on the internet yeah. and they see how we behave, you know, it makes us look like savages. And so when they interact with us, not really knowing where, you know, really not knowing the culture in, in its entirety, that when they when they interact with us, they think that we're like the people they see on the internet. Mm -hmm. 
you know, which causes a discord um, or causes issues with communication and interaction and be, just being social. And uh, it, it blocks us from rising above and, and reaching a, so, a certain socioeconomic, political, even political status. So you're saying more like it's the narrative, like, you know, because because there's a big discord going on right now. I don't, I don't want to say in the world because not, not the entire world, but in the world of TikTok, the internet world, there's something going on amongst these things called diaspora wars of people, you know, coming from the Caribbean or the continent of Africa, where people, as they call it, the FBA foundational Black Americans saying people from the Caribbean or the continent of Africa are denying their Blackness by saying, like, you know, saying, like, look at the Black culture, look what you guys got going on. You guys, 400 years and these guys still haven't, you know, how should I put it, overcome the oppression and com constantly complaining. So I see where you're coming from. This is something that needs to be brought to, brought to you know, a larger scale where we could have an area of safe, educational, respectful dialogue to have an understanding of about what you see on television is not, does not equate to every individual within that particular group. That behaves in such a you know in such manner, so these right. so these things as you as you as you said to add on to that is, are real. We need to address these things and <sighs> these are oh man how should I say the safe in the most safest way respectful way we gotta bring this to end and say not everybody you see is a a nigga you get what I'm saying because that's what they think when they see your behavior in such manner They're like that's a nigga that's a bitch and X Y Z that's not that's not part of, as we say, the culture. What is well, it? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna disagree because, um, you know, when it comes to every culture, mm -hmm. you have a hierarchy and social um, status, yeah. right? So you have the poor people, you have the middle class and you have the high class, right? Yeah. So there's always a bottom mm -hmm. and the bottom, they're usually uneducated as far as like, you know, uh, schooling. Yeah. Right. And, and for my theory is, is from just observing is when you're not educated, you're not able to have a, uh, productive conversation sometimes. Mm -hmm. And some things can be taken out of context. Exactly. And those things that are taken out of context can turn into, uh, uh gun violence. Exactly. Or knife violence or, or just violence in general. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, there's always going to, there's always a bottom class in all, um, 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 uh, uh, cultures. You're right. So the violence, the violence is the result of a breakdown in communication. People don't, like I say, lack of emotional intelligence. Right. And, so that's when people become violent. You know, they feel like the ego is, is somehow fractured. Yeah my ego like yo i got something this i gotta stand on this i gotta you know so yes that's the problem comes at so it's something that also not only you learn through education but it's also from home what, right. kind, of, what kind of upbringing the person may have had you know kind of morals and principles they they family passed on passed you know passed down on to them right right, and right. we gotta take into consideration a lot of things if you look at the inner city it's, it's a predatory environment surrounded by predators out here you know what I'm right. they like the people they they pray they, they pray for the people and pray for the week at the same and pray on the week at the same time so it's kind of our people you know but you know i think that's universal i think even even in, in no, no matter the social class there's mm -hmm. always prey and there's always predators mm -hmm. even even in a corporate environment you have people people who are sharp and they know the business Yes, and they f they see people who don't know business, they and advantage. they take advantage of them. Exactly. It so, right. So that's 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 just human nature. That's the animalistic part of of the human being. Um. So you know that's that's going to always be universal. Mm -hmm. However, what what I'm speaking to is, um, how we glorify the bottom of the barrel. We do, yeah. We glorify it. We put it in the front. 
we put it in front street. Like if you look at, when you look at, uh, I'm going to say Europeans, for instance, because that's where we enter, you know, the country in America is predominantly European, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when, you, when you look at um, Europeans and you look at their culture, yeah. they don't put the bottom, like the mafia, yeah. at the forefront. Mm -hmm. They put corporate America at the forefront. Yeah. The bottom is like hush, mm -hmm. but it's, it's low key cool to them. Yes, but it's still where it should be. It's not at the. It's not at the front. Like even the, the Russian mafia, the Russian mafia. Everybody knows the Russian mafia exists. Well, we already know uh, Irish people have no their uh, uh, underworld. Jewish people have their underworld. The fact, but they keep it in the underworld though. It, you know, it, it, to add on to that, who doesn't love a story of an underdog? Say what? Who doesn't love the story of having underdogs? And and, and that's what it is. America love like we love to see the rebel go against the crowd. Like, yeah, like the gladiator. Because even in ancient times, man, like look at look at this. We're, we're prone to violence. They had gladiators. They used to bread and circuses. They would have men fighting in pits and arenas and coliseums for entertainment. Right. Like, so, but that was that was the. Um... Uh, the high class, of course, bread and circuses, <laughs> right? <laughs> so the crazy. high class taking advantage of the lower class, yeah, or the poor, or the poor people. It still happens, um, but but the, the 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 what I'm speaking to is you know bringing it back to cheese mm -hmm. is that um our people we glorify what other cultures keep hidden, mm -hmm. like we're not putting. I'm sure there are black politicians that are doing well right now in society. There are uh, finance people who are doing well in society. Mm -hmm. There, um, there, um, uh, of course, entertainers, uh, sports, you know, uh, plumbers, like with yeah. truck driving businesses, like mm -hmm. blue collar people who made it big off of just doing good business. Yeah. You know, and we as a culture have to find a way to begin to start putting those people out in the open or in the forefront. But what makes uh, Black American culture the way it is, mm -hmm. is hip hop, hip hop. So we take the streets and we make the street, we glorify the streets, mm -hmm. you know, in, in present day hip hop. Um you know, and present day hip hop now is like rap drill. That's popping right now. And they're yeah. talking about spinning and being demons and killing people yeah. and stuff like that. Where in the nineties, it wasn't as bad. It was more of a half and half. It was a, it was, yeah, it was a balance. Right. And yeah. if I told, if I talked about killing you, I'm going to kill you. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a reason behind why I had to kill you. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? I'm not just spinning a block just because you are op because you wear a different color or because, you know, my dead homies, now I have to retaliate. Yeah. You know, that, that mindset started coming in, let's be honest, when West Coast came in into play in hip hop, which was mm -hmm. around the, the early nineties, you know, and then yeah. Ice T came out with colors and, 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 and the blood and crip West Coast gang culture began to be, a bit more it's glorified. Spread it out. Yeah. And guess what happened? Guess who picked up the culture? New York City. Oh. Yeah. That's when Nine Trey came out. But we got we got to remember it. Or the New uh, or the or the NYBs. You so UBN. UBN. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, because because they that came about from the oppression the brothers was going were experiencing in the in, in the in the penitentiary. Right. Yeah. Like you know, they was going to war with unfortunately our Latin, our Latin brothers, mm -hmm. our Latino brothers. So that came about from that as a you know, a, a resistant front to stop brothers from being you know oppressed, as they put it, with mm -hmm. within the walls. Of right, we know we we. So that was that was that was the the reasoning behind why New York had to do what they do. But do you think they uh, do what they did? But do you think they would be? But you think New York would be blooded out the way it was in nine three if the movie colors didn't come out, if banging on wax didn't come out, if gang culture wasn't so popping yeah. um, 
in in the early nineties? Do you think NYB, I mean, um, uh, UBN would be it would exist? Nah, it, it would it, but you gotta understand. Oh man, I remember it was like nine six nine seven when that whole gang thing started spreading really in the streets when we started having knowledge of it. Well, that's that's our that's our account on it because we're younger. Yeah. So now, like, if we had Corey King on right now, he would tell us a different story. Yeah, he would because from yeah from his experience from behind the wall. But I remember the same time when we was hearing about the Bloods doing the, the face slashings on the trains and everything else. That was nine, yeah. nine seven. That was nine seven. And that movie Colors came on television at the same time, so it's like who was behind it too? Not being conspiracy, like we pro we, we're doing it word of mouth, and then. I'm, wait, hold on. I, I, keep talking. I'm just gonna look up that movie Colors. And, and then the corporation, you know, the media had had you know they handed it as well when they started promoting it because the news talking about it. Then the media came. I mean, then Hollywood put that movie out simultaneously. I'm like, oh wow! So this is really happening. Nah, not so. So, um, as they say in the five percent nation now, cipher. Um, mm-hmm. it, it was released. Colors was released 1988. Yeah, it was 88, but I'm talking about when New York started getting wind of it. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Right. Give me a second, man. Give me a second. Let me just move this real So we back. We back, people. We back. So where were we? We were talking about... Um, Colors. The movie Colors. Colors. The movie Colors came out in 88. You're saying that, to your recollect- recollection, 97 is when the Bloods really started making way you know with the slashing and started getting on the news and stuff like that but yeah. you know like i'm just to add to that um the brothers from the prison behind the wall they didn't approve they didn't approve of that that's a fact they did it that was the, that's the crazy part about it because you know i had um i got members that i got family members that are that are that are bloods and they were elaborating on that they, they didn't agree with that you understand what i'm saying they say that was just some wild stuff that people just wanted the recognition for themselves to prove they um pledge it, pledge their allegiance, which I found very, it was very like just weird, like to attack civilians. I'm like that didn't make sense, but I guess that's where you know that's where their hearts were at the moment to prove their allegiance to their to their gang, but it didn't make sense. Well, they were all young though, so you know, mm. you know, and 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 the slashing, I think comes from like the the prison system anyway and then you know like new york I, I don't know when you know in 97 98 i was like i was like 17 98 yeah. i was 18 you know i used to walk around with a box cutter you know what i'm saying and 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 i walked around with a box cutter because i felt like oh the blood's cutting people all right so they cutting people you try to cut me i got this box cutter i'm gonna cut you we're gonna be cutting yeah. each other razor yeah. tag <laughs> we're gonna be playing razor tag so that that was my mentality. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I always had a blade on me. Always. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, and um, you know, I went to I went to um Truman, you know, and um, you know, what you do with Truman is, you know, you know, you before you go into the school, before you go into the metal detectors, you hand it off to your man. And he's not going to school. You know what I'm saying? He probably live in co-op city. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so or you or you or you put it somewhere around the area hidden so when you come back out of school you could uh recover it so that's how it was when i was coming up because in truman you had um you had the valley yeah you know against co-op city oh. you had, like jamaican dudes you had bloods mm-hmm. and, and then you had a, you know a sprinkle of five percenters and i was a part of the five percenter group yeah uh, it was me and a few other guards in truman and we down right and we were just we were just together we were always together so and nobody really really um tested the guards like that no. because we were like tight you know what i'm saying everybody knew like the guards weren't playing you know what i'm and saying they're serious about it you know, the guards are serious i went to erasmus brooklyn in like 90s in like 98 i was in high school so i, I know about packing metal you know blades and stuff with metal detectors how i used to stick my blade into school was i used to attend saturday school was where they didn't use metal detectors so i would go there with the blade Put it in my locker. That's all I have with me, <laughs> unfortunately, throughout the middle of the week. So it was a problem. And I was getting into all kinds of trouble. But I remember school was infested. It was gang infested. A lot, a lot of Crips in there. We had Crips in there. We had folks. Um, yeah, but that's Brooklyn. That's different. In the Bronx, it was blooded out. 
Yeah, the Bronx. Uh, I know about that. The it Bronx was blooded was... out. It was blood and, and it was gods. Bloods and gods. Exactly. So I, I remember that. I remember those days. So it was kind of part of the ice sound. I think a lot of water. But yeah, we had New York was a festival of games, man. But my thing was that it always, I always find a poem how New York started copying other, you know, coasts. I'm like, that's not New York, but to each their own. You understand? I'm like, I thought New York was just used to the Decepticons, you know, they black spades, they low lives. You, un you understand? And but that's all the more reason, not to cut your wisdom, that's all the more reason why <laughs> it was easy for New York to adopt gang culture because it's always been gangs in New York. That's exactly. why I understand, like, New York wasn't jacking other people's culture. It was just that uh, uh um what's the what's the guy's name who came up with the um uh uh, uh um the ubn og mac og mac og yeah. mac og mac that was just og max creation in the prison prison system and remember everybody in the prison system was already five percent anyway yeah a lot of yeah a lot of bloods were, were gods before right before and so and, and so if you if you go back to like queen's flip and his soul b um interviews dope interviews too they were dope, dope interviews classics yeah. classics let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's not forget too the, the ones with the latin kings too like a lot of history was between but them. you know what he didn't do queen's flip the, we're going off subject a little bit mm -hmm. he didn't he didn't um uh uh, uh um go into the god's history like he was supposed to i would say the same thing too he should have he should have yo if he could do it that would have been so dope like you know because how many? Not to, I don't know. We off topic, but how many? How many of the first nine borns are actually still in in existence? Man, that's a good question. Um, oh man, that's a that's a great question. That you know what? I don't want to, you know, speak out of term and then have the gods like, nah, nah, yeah, nah, God. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> something, that's something we gotta ask Inf Mega, who's uh, the in the media. Yeah, well, Inf, Inf, yeah, Inf Mega may know that. Inf Mega may yeah. have that. Um, I know the last person I saw. From the first nine born was a BG number seven, and that was a, that was a while back. I'm pretty sure I'm not. You know what? I don't want to speak on it. Yeah, let's not speak on that. Let, let, yeah, yeah. We, 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 like, you know, we don't with, the God, with the five percent nation, you got to be right and exact. Yeah, you know, you know. So, so we're gonna scratch that. I don't, I don't know if any of the first nine borns are, are still alive. I know, um, first born prince is not alive. So that's that's one down right there. You know what I mean? Yeah, because that that would have been dope if he did something like that. Because I think we need more gods in the world, and then, and it's it's crazy because I I heard somebody say the same thing that you mentioned that if he had the gods history, Whack One Hundred was saying something like that. Like mm. I heard a snippet of something on, on Clubhouse, and he's like, "Yo, why? You know, you talking about how New York, how Bloods, you know, got into New York." He's like, "You know, granted, it, what it was created for at the moment was necessary, but why don't they talk about the history of the five percenters?" He's like, "Yeah, known for that. Talk about that, right? Because because." I believe, not believe, I know for a fact that if they had more, again, I want to be right in exact, but if the gods had more presence over New York, like how in the golden era of hip hop, you hear it in the music and everything else, right? I think things would have been different on the streets, like a little more different this day and age, because I think a lot of young people are looking for acceptance. Like there's three, there's three A's that people in life always look for is acceptance, approval, an acknowledgement. I think if they had that, they'll be all right, man. Because the gods always, you know, always spoke about knowledge of self and education and having a and, and, and having, you know, a trade to earn money. That's true. So I get we need more of that. And I you know I want to see, you know, more of a God presence out there. But well, the, you know what? Well, the gods didn't go nowhere. No, they didn't. The, yeah, so I, you know what I mean. Like we here on 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 a New Yorker's perspective, mm -hmm. and um, so we're doing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're and doing then, it. And, and then we have we have God still in the school. We got you know soon as a law. He teaches classes on Thursdays. Yes. Um, 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 he's on Instagram. Uh, what is it? Soon as a law. I think that's his name on Instagram. Um, and then you have uh Doc Dark Himala, he's always there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have um Allah Shah, he teaches classes on Saturdays, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Um, so the school is still there. 
Mm-hmm. Um, as far as uh, a market, I, I, I think that the 5% nation just needs more of a marketing strategy to be in the forefront because the 5% nation's marketing strategy, they, it, there, there wasn't no, there wasn't a marketing strategy. No, it was just, I, you know what? I'm going to say something that what was close to their marketing strategy would be, um, just teaching on the street. That's exactly speaking the language of the people, going out, going, going after the youth, right? Because those are the future leaders, and that I'm not saying the gods in general, but um, I think the elders are afraid to approach the youth now. Right. Okay, we we could go into that, but just, I just like to want to keep want to yeah. bring it back in. Yeah, Let's bring it right. back to bring it bringing it back to cheese. So mm-hmm. so bringing it back to cheese, right? So um, what we were talking about is how our culture as a black as black people we glorify the streets we put the we put what's supposed to be at the bottom at the top yes we market we market death and destruction mm-hmm. and we sh- we we ignore you know um education and you know being intellectuals and being real men and handling exactly. responsibilities and taking care of your family and yourself and your community. Exactly. Um, so, you know, I think that in the black culture has to change. There has to be a change. And um, going back to our, uh, uh, the subject of marketing, the marketing for our people right now would be hip hop culture. Burn, death, kill. Right. And, and it's murder, death, murder, death, kill right now. So what would you say would be a way we could balance it out? Um, moving as a community, they say it takes a village to raise a child, right? Where people get out of that, that mindset of it's all about me. And I got mine, the hell of the others. You know what I'm saying? We need more, uh, more community-based operations where people can come together and talk about what's affecting what's affecting the neighborhood instead of being afraid with this man the whole stop stinching thing is part of that too and when i say the whole stop stinching thing if you involve in the streets yeah we know the rules don't get caught up in that but to my people being afraid to speak up when something has gone wrong in the community mm-hmm. people are afraid to correct others because if you try to correct somebody on doing something that's wrong, you view it as a hater, or you get attacked for that. Mm. They don't have the they don't have the patience to you know to to process the information. It's it's like ignorance is celebrated. Like if you're doing something wrong, go ahead, yeah, keep doing you. You know what I'm saying? One mm. life to live, YOLO. Instead of saying, nah, slow down. You know this could happen to you if you don't take heed to what's to what I'm saying. So it it takes it takes a whole lot. We need to. We need to restructure on what's what on what's cool because everything to us has to be cool. Okay, so so to 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 my question, what you're saying is is we need to come together, pretty much unify. Mm-hmm. All right. However, what you're saying it's not concrete. Like like I'm saying what could bring a balance to what's going on out here right now hip hop is the 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 marketing for the murder death kill and yeah. hip hop is 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 it's hard to combat hip hop with billions of dollars going into budgets mm-hmm. like a person like little dirk right uh-huh. how can how can we offset this uh dark energy in the music and in the community when we are when we have when we have billions of dollars behind the hip hop genre mm-hmm. now let's say if you and I come out and we say this has to be stopped we won't be heard because we don't have the marketing dollars to offset it you said it it's the marketing dollars cuz cuz who, who's profiting off our pain really it's these, it's these execs. It's YouTube. Yeah, those are the corporates. It's YouTube. It's, it's all the corporate 
agencies. So it's, so it's the corporation because they know like a lot of these dudes come off the street, don't have, they, they come into the industry at a disadvantage. Some are not educated about how the business runs and some are, are in dire need to get out. Like, yo, I'm taking this. I'm talking about my experience and my pain, but if you offer me a million, two million dollars to get out of here, I'm getting out of here, but I'm still going to talk about this. You get what I'm saying? And the corporation will be like, yo, you know, you, you got such, you got, say for instance, a little crocodile got beef with little beaver. You understand? For some reason, the corporations will be like, yo, this is dope. You know, since he said his name, you know, your numbers are going up. So here's some more dollars. Yo, this some. Yeah, go ahead. I want you to go ahead. This that dude. You understand? And both, and, and people invest in that because people like drama. Like, People love, people love love the sight of drama. They, people are infatuated with it. They hear it. They want to run along with it. It's just it's 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 it's, un, it's, it's unfortunate because these we have a lot of quote unquote backpack rappers that people call conscious rappers, right? The 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 the, the media, <clears throat> these corporations will push these guys that talk about negativity out more instead of a conscious quote unquote conscious rapper. Mm-hmm. People don't want to hear that. A lot of people want to go to the club or wherever they at, getting drunk and high. They don't want to hear no smart things at the moment. You know, you understand? Unfortunately, it's sad, man. You so know, I, I think I think that um, I think it's just the way. I think the I think the way so called conscious rap is packaged for the public to consume. Now, the fact that you call it conscious rap and you put it in that category, it already brings it, it, it devalues it. Yeah. Because conscious rap actually sounds soft. If, if, and, and, and when it comes to men, I think the uh, men are probably the top consumers of hip hop, hip hop music. If, now, I, I think men don't want to hear nothing soft. I disagree. I disagree. I All disagree. right. No, no, no. Go ahead. I think it's women. Women like hip hop more. I told you, couple. Of, you go by these concert halls. You see a lot of women online. They want to hear Drake. They want to. They want to hear. They know songs like from these rappers better than half of the men. Believe it or not, you know. Because would you would you would you agree that hip hop is predominantly a man's uh uh mute uh genre? It is. It is. It, it is. It is. From, from, yeah, it's, I believe so. But, so, but, so men, so men on wax, they're speaking to other men, and that will attract other men. It, yeah. It, it it does. Yeah, because you know, it's like I think it. Hip hop was supposed to be like a healing thing, but yeah, of course, men, men, you know, men. That's how we dialogue. Like, what you got to say? You know, it's like it's common. Exactly. So when so when when I hear conscious rap. I don't want to, if I see conscious rap, I'm going to automatically skip it. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm, a, and, and I'm considered a conscious dude. I don't want to hear conscious. I don't want, as soon as I see conscious rap, nah. So you say, so, so uh, not, no disrespect to the, no disrespect to the legend. So you never got hype over brand new being record, man, or brand new being, come on. No, but, but see, brand new being was never considered conscious, conscious. rap. But that's what they would call them today. But that's what they would, it. that's what I'm saying. That's how yeah. they package it now. Yeah, exactly. And devalue the music. Exactly. So, so what I'm saying is like Brand Nubian wasn't what wasn't considered conscious rap. They came out with songs like punk j- punks jump up to get beat down. Yeah, of course. I don't I'm not calling them conscious, but that's what some young dudes would call them because I respect the, the brothers, they they were you know they were deep and they were no they were not songs either. They were no no punks either. You understand? But that's what people will call it nowadays. Like, I don't want to hear like Kendrick Lamar. People are like, I don't want to hear that. J. Cole. Like, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't want to hear Kendrick Lamar or J. Cole. <laughs> Why not? Yo, they soft, man. <laughs> they too soft for me. I can't do it. Elaborate. What, 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 what's soft about Kendrick Lamar? What, what all, right, Ken, all right. If we talk about Kendrick Lamar, now we're talking about how, how um, more intellectual lyricism is packaged at the moment. Yeah. Um, so like Kendrick Lamar doesn't Kendrick Lamar doesn't look like he'll punch you in the mouth. Oh come on. So now you are going off tough. And as a as a <laughs> and then he doesn't sound he doesn't sound like somebody that you who punch you in your mouth. Look like me. Season, bro. But like like <laughs> I, no no I'm saying like like come on bro like you know when you when you when you get in front of somebody you can tell 
<laughs> I hear you, but it's just come on. Yo. Come on, Kendrick, bro. You like, know what I'm talking I, I, about. I know what you're talking about, but he's like Kendrick only threatening to you. Like, like, yo, bro, if Kendrick stand in front of you talking about like, yo, I'm about to, yo, get up out of here or it's on. He will do. He probably do some shit like you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm gonna look at Kendrick and laugh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I, I'm gonna be, I, I'm gonna move him out of the way. Like, get out of here, man. Stop playing. <laughs> if I hit you with 16 verses of different voices. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, yo, but that's the thing. His voice too. His voice is like, I love this. I love this. Like, yo, I don't want to hear that. No, nah, but you know what it is? It, it's all based on what you, on what attracts you. Like, as far as it, like. I like hardcore hip hop too, but I'm also into like poets and people who, you know, have you thinking like, oh, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like Kendrick. Yeah, that's that's if you want to sit down and think about shit like that. <laughs> but like, like I'm I'm a gym guy. I'm in the gym. I'm pumping iron. I, Kendrick, come on! As soon as I see his name, I don't even want to. We skip that. Uh, um, 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 what's his name? J Cole. Pa man, look at the name. Oh, come on, bro. Come on, I right. <laughs> yo, I right, yo. See? Yo, new hardcore rapper just came out. His name is Kendrick Lamar. Nah, man. You know what I'm saying? Even Kevin Gates has a better name than those. Oh, guys. come on. That's his name. All right, you talking about names. Come on. These are man. like real names, right? So, so like, mm-hmm. listen to this. Like, you know how Kevin Kevin Gates spits it. Yeah. I'm not gonna tell him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's not considered a conscious rapper at all. No. But he throws little nuggets in there. But, 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 but if you listen to his voice, his image, and his, his voice and his image and his name, mm-hmm. Kevin Gates, Kendrick Lamar. Oh, come on. Jay I, I, I a little new, a, a New York bias over here, man. Come nah, on. nah, it's not no New York bias because I like, I would, I would listen to Kevin Gates. I like, I went through all my music. I started erasing a lot of stuff, you know, because um, I just want to kind of keep negativity out of my mind. Yeah. Um, I erased negativity and whack rappers. As a matter of fact, I don't want to say whack rappers. Rappers I don't like. I erased all J. Cole stuff. I erased all Kendrick Lamar stuff. I could not erase Kevin Gates, man. All right, it's each day on. I get it. Yeah, I get it. I'm saying, listen to Kendrick. Because I'm going to Hold on. Can you, can you do your hardest? What, what is your hardest workout in the gym? Well, music to listen to? No, no. What's your hardest workout? Like when you say, "Damn, I got to get ready to do this workout." Oh, um, benching. All right, so that's tough for you. Yeah, it depends how much I'm lifting. Yeah. All right, so you get up under the bench. Mm-hmm. This shit is hard. It's about to go down. Yeah. Kendrick Lamar comes on. Yeah. You ain't, you ain't getting those reps out, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not gonna get those reps out, bro. <laughs> Like, like I'm gonna keep it real. Like, I'm I'm from Brooklyn. I be telling people I listen to um Pap Hoos. They be like, yeah, they be like, really? I'm like, Pap is nice. To me, Pap, yeah, is Pap, Pap is nice. Pap can get you underneath that. Pap can get you to get those reps underneath that bar, though. <laughs> J Cole cannot get you to get those reps underneath that bar, bro. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Drake is not gonna do it. Drake can't do it. Drake, can't do it. <laughs> Drake not, not Drake. Not, Drake is good. For, Drake is good for cardio. Really? Some soft shit like <laughs> running. Like I rather listen to Kenny G. You know Kenny saying? G. <laughs> 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 I can't. I can't do so many Drake records. I can do like three to four Drake records, and that's it. Call it a day, man. Yo, that's a whole nother subject. I'm trying to figure out how they made him like the best rapper in the world right now. But hey. To me, I think the next dude that had to see, unfortunately, we spoke about that. Yeah, that's not about murder, death, kill. So let's get let's not get into that. But I like, I like, I like the Griselda boys. <laughs> I know, like Conway the Machine. I don't know, bro. Like, I like them too. I like them too. But it's too much. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It, it, it. It's a homie that got Makami. He's dope too. Yeah, there's quite, there's quite a few of them. That's nice. Like. Unfortunately, like, I don't say unfortunately. I like Uncle Murder. Oh, uh, M- Urkel, Uncle Murder. That's my whole. When it's time to lift weights, <laughs> yeah. Uncle Murder's on. <laughs> Uncle Murder's on. You see what I'm saying? So again, like, I it's think the it- way it's packaged. That's the thing. Yeah, it's the way it's packaged. 
like if if um like brand newbie in the way they were packaged, they were packaged like just a rap group. The way yeah. uh Ice Cube wasn't Ice Cube was packaged as a hardcore artist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if when you start putting conscious on it, that's yeah, so. what that's what throws it off. But th doesn't that show the sickness amongst our people though? To say conscious and we have we like you see because. I think it's a, it's a it's it's a global thing, but I'm mostly being that I've been in America, born here. It's like we celebrate the brute and the ignorant, but the the wise and intelligent is viewed as corny. You see, you see what I'm saying? It's kind of well, sick. well, well, because it's it's a time and a place for for certain things, mm -hmm. right? So, like, if you think about people. <laughs> who listen to music, when are they listening to music? They're listening to music when they're driving, working out, at a club, uh, 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 or vibing out, or just mm. vibing out. So when I'm, if I'm driving, I'm at a club, or uh, I'm working out, I don't want to hear J. Cole. I, I don't want to hear, I want to I, I I hear, I want to hear, I want to hear something that's going to get me ready to get to work. I'm dri I'm driving to work. Like I gotta get hype. I gotta get up. I got my, my OT Genesis. Go get the money. Go get the money. Like something like that. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. Something like that. I don't want to hear, you know, the molecular structure in a cell and, oh, no, no. and how those how are, those are vitamins crazy rappers. How, how <laughs> vitamins interact with no, the molecular are, structure in the cell of a muscle. Like, come on, bro. No, those are the crazy rappers with the, the camouflage hats that be like, so the nuclear molecular, looking at the quasars and rate. Those are those weird, <laughs> those, are weird. <laughs> those super duper lyrical that come out of nowhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, just like Andre 3000, he's considered a conscious rapper, right? Yo, nice. Andre 3000 is a, is nice. He'll eat, he'll eat, I think he'll eat 85% of these rappers out here. I think you you reaching, man. You nah, reaching, man. reaching. You reaching, bro. <laughs> Andre three thousand looks like. Let me see. Andre three thousand looks like he's from the village. <laughs> I'm good, bro. YMCA. YMCA. I ain't trying to hear you, bro. Like next, like and then and then and then he comes out his mouth with that voice. I see C on town and the D D like that voice, that voice, bro. It's the voice. Andre is crazy with it, bro. Like yo, um, I was I was talking to a a a, a, a friend of mine. And um, we were talking about Andre's 3000's verse on, um, I forgot this song. It was with G UGK. It was with UGK. It's what like a, it? it's like a marriage, a marriage song kind of like. I, I choose you, that one. I choose you. He went in. Bro, his verse is trash compared to <laughs> Bun V and Pimp C's verse. <laughs> Come on, he's going way above people's heads. Yo, the Pimp hardest C, Pimp C and you Pimp C and Bun B got on that track and, and killed it the way they were supposed to. That's what it's, it's that's awesome. why he was the opener. You know, when you when you know how rappers do. Yeah. Like you rap before me too. Yeah. I know when your verse is not that's not hitting like that, yeah. you go first. L lies. I disagree. <laughs> no, that's like no, it has to be like that because no, no. because look, if your verse is hitting like that, mm -hmm. the second verse that comes in, it fizzles out. Then the yeah. third verse that comes in, nobody's listening no more. I, I hear what you're saying, but with that order now, nah, because let's just keep inspect the deck, man. Always comes out and close them. You know, He's, he's the grand opener. Okay, all right. He can't, oh, yeah, you're right about that. A bomb atomically, <laughs> Socrates, philosophies. He was the first I'm verse on that. You're right. And, you're and, right. and, the, other, and the other joint, man. Slam through, name like a neighborhood slider, man. Slam through. Yo, come on. Expect deck to me is most underrated group <laughs> member. Uh, nah, everybody gets not, unexpected deck. Is not just, underrated, but overlooked like in the sense that if he had, from what I see from that show, I was watching it on Hulu and all that. If they had put him out like second or third, he would have been out there, bro, like further. Because Deck, you know, he had some, he came through with some joints, man. Well, I heard, I finally heard that 
the verse he did on that Tupac song, Got My Mind Made Up, the original version of Deck was going in, man. I think Pac heard that. I'm, I'm a Pac fan. Anybody heard that? Like, nah, West Side, don't take that off. Take him off that track. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Deck is crazy, man. Yo, but bringing it or, back, bringing it back. Mm -hmm. Um, rest in peace to see. Uh, rest in peace to see. Cheese. Rest, rest in peace to cheese. Rest My in peace. For real. Goes out to Gilly and and family. Uh, yes. we're discussing what happened with him recently. Um, he was killed in Philadelphia. Exactly. Uh, Twenty five years old. It's a tragedy. Um, I we genu genuinely care about the community. We actually put work out there in the community feeding mm -hmm. people and 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 just just trying our best to do things for the community so we exactly. genuinely we genuinely care so when we say our condolences and and our and 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 our positive energy goes out to the to the family of 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 Gillies uh is is sincere um we're not just doing this episode you know with cheese's name on there and Gillies name on the tags mm -hmm. just to get views you know we feel like this is something that need to be spoken about, you know, and, um, you know, basically the narrative, the narrative that's pushed in the black community is we, we, we take the bottom and we put the bottom in the forefront. We're discussing how we could try to figure out some kind of balance and how we can make, you know, intellect more marketable. And we're just discussing how conscious rap is not as marketable because when you call it conscious rap, it devalues, um, um exactly it, it devalues the uh perception semantics you know. baby they play with the words and this is what they they, they I don't I don't it. think they do it I think they, that I think that the community names it a certain thing mm -hmm. and then everybody just goes into that pocket and they follow suit so mm -hmm. you know instead of labeling you know things conscious rap or what have you you know it would be better if you know we had uh rappers mix it up okay you know like like red man wasn't a conscious rapper but he was oh matter of fact he, he was never saying nothing uh conscious uh uh red man wasn't a i mean the red man method man wasn't a conscious rapper but he was dropping jewels in there though Little nuggets yeah on, on the second album yeah right he was. right and, and on the first album yeah he was every 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 method man album i don't remember i don't recall him not mentioning the five percent or throwing a five percent nugget in there, or yeah, or the lingo, right, right. So, so I think this conscious rap label, I think that should die. Okay. If 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 we could kill that label and dudes just spit, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and 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 just have some social social commentary in there more often. I think we will we will we, we'll, we'll bring about a balance. Like if Drake himself, he's not considered a conscious rapper. He's considered just a a, a hip -hop, a, a pop star, hip hop star. Yeah. But Drake says nothing about the black community. There's no social commentary. When's the last time you heard any social commentary in black music and and, and hip hop? And it's hip -hop. out there, but we got you got to find. <laughs> it's not really like when something happens in the black community, like police brutality. That's when brothers start talking about it like little baby. And, I, I, and, I, and to me, when I when I see that, I get them. They they at the moment they feel like that. But I'm like, where was that albums or songs ago? Because don't you see what's going on around you? Don't it all comes down to hip hop being from the streets, and the streets aren't influenced by people of which would be, be considered of, 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 of a conscious state of thinking or state of mind. Like the 5% nation were ran the streets back in the days. So everyone was influenced by um, the 5% teachings and it was, it, it, it permeated through, through the, uh, through the, um, um, uh, through hip hop music. So that's what that's happened. It, it, the streets is first. So we, we gotta, we gotta, put something in the streets worth value for it to influence the streets for it to influence the music to bring about that balance uh -huh. so that's how i see it that's how i see it but uh <laughs> but we're about to click off man this was a great first episode definitely uh, man. nyp Again, again, rest in peace to Cheese, rest Gilly, cheese. and Wallow. Uh, 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 Wallow, my condolences. 
Praise um, and light to the family. Much love. You know what I'm much, saying? Much love, much love. And we're out of here. NYP. Next episode coming soon. Peace. New York Perspective. Peace, people. Love.